we discussed, is she gonna go over 400 or under 400 in terms of kilo total? She had responded, I am going 400 and up. That's the level she's at. And speaking of high level, Marissa Inda, former 52 kilo world champion, 130 kilo on the bar for her. Smooth and easy. You know, walking around in the warm-up room is is like walking around in, in a Hall of Fame section of the powerlifting. You see people like Chad Wesley Smith, um, Jason Trombley, Taylor Atwood, just a who's who of powerlifting. And up next, talking about a powerlifting resume, Eric Kupperstein in the 59 kilo class. Eric, multiple time world champion in the Masters been all over the world competing at the highest levels decades in the game opening with 145 kilo Let's, that's, it's going to be on the border. Let's see what the judges say. It's going to be on the border. Yep, good enough. And sometimes it's not a weed issue. I mean, Eric, he's in his 50s. You get, if you get a little tight on one side, Del Gadillo in the 66 kilo class, 175 kilo loaded on the bar for his opener. 66 kilo class is gonna be extremely tight today with Jonathan Garcia and Rodrigo Manzo battling. And at the world level, it gets even steeper. Very competitive class. Look good to me. And knees locked. Uh oh. You know what? I don't. I don't think so. No. Yeah. Y you'd have to be very friendly. Yeah. <laughs> you were being nice. Yeah. <laughs> it uh. You know he came up. It, it moves smooth. I'll tell you that. The weight. It's just the knees weren't locked. I think balance was an issue. Had to take a step back, and that's just not going to pass. But hopefully they retake that weight. Would you say? I. I would retake it. I mean, I think that you're looking at a meet like this. You just want to get on the board and get the nerves shaken off and take more free taking weight so you can take a bigger chunk on your first and then do it again. You know, some people gamble and they want to go up even though they missed. And if you missed after you moved up in weight, I mean, there's no turning back there. Andrew Sardis, 74 kilo class, opening also with 175 kilo. And see if he fares any better. No troubles there. You know, I had said, you want everyone just to get on the board on your openers. You don't want any major drama. It's bound to happen. Someone's going to miss an opener. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I went to see Arnold in 2019. Missed my Arnold, or opening day, whatever it was. Yeah. Here is Rodrigo Manzo. 225 kilo on the bar for his opener. He is in the midst of a 66 kilo showdown with Jonathan Garcia. Both have world championship aspirations. Only one is going to go through. Who is it going to be? It's starting right now. You know, you look at these gentlemen's past totals and you look at what wins the world championships. They are both there. Both world-class lifters. Okay. 
Three whites. I tell you what, so when you do your opener, you're really trying to solidify where it's the strike zone. That's where the strike zone is. That's the depth I need. I'll hit that all day and you'll stay there. Yeah, it, it's funny. I get to a point where it's like, I know what I think, but I hold my breath until I see it on the board. And the king is here. The king is back. Taylor Ratwood set powerlifting on fire in 2021 with what he did. Coming back to the platform here today, he had spoken about on social media, you know, he'd been dealing with some injuries. Um, and he doesn't have to go all out. But he needs enough to get himself to the IPF World Championships, and that's really the end goal. 230 kilo on the bar for him. Well within the means for Taylor Ratwood. Look how he handles the weight, even though it's light for him. Yeah. His setup, he treats it like it's a PR. It's, it's a beautiful, yeah. It's a beautiful setup. This is what you want to see. Every, every lift looking the same, the same walkout, the same routine. That's and it. And it's wonderful. When you ask what separates the best, you know, from the contenders, this is it. You come out with warm-up weight and you still treat it like a PR now. Absolutely. Jonathan Garcia who is battling Rodrigo Manzo for his pathway to IPF Worlds. 250 kilo loaded on the bar for his opener. That is a 145 pound man opening with 551 pounds. Jonathan has totaled just shy of 700 kilo, and that's the mark that can win you an IPF title. He is capable, but first, he needs to get past Rodrigo Manzo. Mm. Well, it's certainly move fast. Look good. All right. Eli lights. There we go. Shout out to you here in the background as coach is actually King of Lifts podcast co-host, Arian messi Kamesi, coach of the Strength Guys. And we are now on the second attempts. Cindy Vaughn, 47 kilo class, 90 kilo being loaded on the bar. Now she took an 82 and a half kilo opener. What do you think about the seven and a half kilo jump? You know, I think that opener w moved very well, very fast, like a warm-up. So this seems like an okay jump to me. Um, it's a big jump at that weight, but it seems like an okay one. I we'll agree, see. yeah. For, for someone in this weight class, it is a rather big, but she she handled the opener with ease. Yeah. Once you get that first one in, you solidify yourself at least to move on to the bench press. Deep again, wow. Nice. Yeah. Not Seven a and a half kilos, she handled it well. There you go. So you look, and it says her PR here is 105, and I wonder if just taking big jumps is something that she does. I mean, if she's pacing for a PR, that is a monster jump. That is a monster <laughs> jump, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to wait and we'll see. We'll see, yeah. And this is Agatha, I believe. Um, the graphical change in just a moment. She has 127.5 kilo loaded on the bar for her. Which I think is her current PR, so. Agatha Shabilsky. Shabilsky. Up. No. Nope. 
now. Right. Agatha did buy herself a little bit of insurance with that 120 kilo opener. Yeah. She she can make another run at that. Yeah. I don't know if it's a strength issue or a technical issue. That's something she could fix. Hopefully it's a technical issue. It did look like she had a decent amount of trouble though coming out of that hole. She bounced right out of it. Um, we'll see. I mean, it is a tie with her PR, so. Right. And I think with. Yep, that's. Alexandria Ratana Vaughn. 130 kilo on the bar for her. Yep, there we go. Looks good. Nice. Up next, Heather Connor, multiple time world champion. Now she said she's pacing for 400 kilo, possibly more. Yeah. That is world class. That'll win you world championships any given year. Mm hmm. Except for maybe this one. <laughs> this is true. You know, and I think that that's an interesting story here that we're going to see a lot of strategy in this meet, but Worlds is going to be Worlds is going to be wild in the forty-seven and fifty-twos. I'm super excited for it. We've never seen a clash like it's going to like is going to happen between her and Turbo Tip of France. One hundred and thirty-five kilo on the bar for Heather's second squat attempt. All right. Uh, Judges all right, give it three white lights. And uh, do you happen to have Heather's PR? Hmm? 143 is Heather's squat PR, so we're well within her means. But yeah. I'm interested in seeing what she's going to load because 135, it's it's eight kilo off. We're starting to tread a little closer than I might have thought. Me too. I mean, I knew she was going to play this conservative. She really has no reason not to. So I'm excited because that. Marissa Inda. Uh. Taking 135 for a ride. Okay. Nice. Gets three white lights. Okay, well, Heather Connor puts in 142.5 kilo for a third squat, half a kilo below her personal best. Wow. This this is, look at, I thought she was coming, but I didn't think she was going to go all out like that. That's a, you know, yeah. Worlds is pretty close. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, but then again, that 135 looked like nothing. So it just could be that we have absolutely no clue what Heather is capable of squatting at this point. When the sun is shining, go ahead and make some hay. Eric Kupperstein, 160 kilo on the bar for his second attempt. Opened with 145, taking a pretty big, sizable jump in yeah. the 59 kilo class. Oh, now mm -hmm. this is, you know, his yeah. opener was borderline. Okay. okay. Well, he got two. That's what he needs. Hundred and seventy five kilo being loaded on the bar for Arnold Delgadillo okay. in the So he is oh, sorry. Six six kilo class. He is repeating this weight, which we had talked about. I think that's a smart move. I uh, agree. I mean get yourself on the board before you start yeah. gambling. The first one you miss on the technicality, the next one you miss on strength, now you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna get stronger in the next five minutes. You can tighten up your technique. So good play. Mm -hmm by Arnold and his ha handlers. Okay. Just needs to keep his balance. Looks like he did it. You know, it's funny, like, sometimes they come back, they hit the second attempt, mm -hmm. the same weight they missed from the first, and it's like, wow, that, you know, that was definitely a technical thing. What strength right. was not the issue. No, not at all. 
74 kilo class, 185 kilo on the bar for Andrew Sardis. There are a lot of nerves going into squat. You know, it's like. Very first lift of yeah. the whole day. That Very first, first squat, it feels a little bit different. It hits different it as does. it gets set. Definitely does. Give a quick shout out to our sponsors, SBD, doing a lovely stream here. They have put together, they, it, they've been working hard <laughs> leading into this. A lot of sleepless nights, but it's all worth it when it comes together like this. And Andrew Sardis, 185. Looks smooth. What do you think, Liam? I think that was a good second attempt. I mean, yeah. Good stuff. I'm going to agree with you. I think there's a decent jump left in there, so. Rodrigo Manzo in the 66 kilo class, 235 kilo being loaded on the bar for Rodrigo. Let me tell you something. The kid has a heart of a lion. I see him in the back of the warm up room. He had heard the podcast, the preview show said, I heard everybody's picking against me. I recognize I'm the underdog. I'm gonna prove you wrong today in this showdown. Yeah, and I mean, his deadlift is so we'll uh, see. It's going to be interesting. He knows he's yeah. going to lose ground in the bench and mm -hmm. cover it in the deadlift. He's not afraid. This is all part of the plan, but he needs these extra kilos. Here's 10 extra kilos he can add towards that total. That's 10 extra kilos you could take off your final deadlift for the win. This is actually a PR squat you're pointing out there, Leah. Yeah, so let's see how this goes. You know what, it looked like he was about to fight through that sticking point. It was a grinder, but it looked like he was gonna get through it. I wonder with some small adjustments if he can. Yeah, it looks like he maybe just fell forward a little bit, you know, and it's, you want to try to keep your knees forward and I get that, but yeah, maybe some slight adjustments and that's there. Taylor Atwood, 242.5. Now with the announcement of Sheffield, everybody knows this is the first step in getting himself there. A heavy favorite for Sheffield looking ahead. He's got to solidify his pathway to Worlds, win Worlds, and have that ticket to Sheffield in hand. Which that's gonna be so fun. You know, with the just, the little details we know already, it's gonna be the biggest powerlifting meet Certainly of this generation. Taylor Atwood, the king is back, 242.5. Let's see how he handles it. You know, battling some injuries coming into here. Doesn't want to risk too much. He wants to be healthy for the world championships. Oh, oh nice. wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and again, ever the professional, Taylor Atwood setting up for this, you know, so tight, taking the weight seriously, not taking it for granted. Nope. And I Jonathan Garcia, if he hits this, adds 10 kilo to towards his total. He's in a battle in the 66s with Rodrigo Manzo. Listen, I get it. Rodrigo just missed his second squat. If Rodrigo comes back and hits that squat, mm -hmm. we already told you it's the deadlift where he's going to cover his ground. So Rodrigo can still recover. Jonathan needs these kilos. Put the pressure on Manzo, make him load up with a deadlift he can't handle. Yeah. You know what? I love it when meets come down to that final pull. I, that's, uh, uh, if it were me, every meet would be that <laughs> <way>. <laughs> It's what it's all about. You know, it's, it's interesting when you have the clash of styles. Jonathan Garcia is a subtotal lifter. Manzo back end loaded with the deadlift, and they clash, and this is where you know, you can't judge it event by event. In sports, momentum sways from side to side, especially when it's this tight. So Jonathan needs these 10 kilos. Hmm. 
I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Three whites. I mean, you look at, you know, economical is the word I use. Economical yeah. with the depth. Get those white lights. Don't go any deeper than you need to. Yeah, and it's also like we're not sitting up there and seeing it. So, but it's, it's no, definitely. No, no. The judges are positioned right there. They got a, they got the best view in the house. We got a good view for the action to call the action. They're right there on depth view on the side. And you know, I think it's neat that we have the battle at 66 that's happening here, and then a lot of other people we're seeing them play the smart strategy to get themselves to worlds where we're going to have a really great cool competition at worlds and you know that's what it's about and i'm excited to see it cindy vaughn 95 kilo on the bar for her so this is below we're in the 47 kilo it's class below, yeah below her personal class but look at you don't know people's background stories they come in pa nats is in town whether or not you're ready or not you're signing up you're showing up yeah. And you tell yourself, look at it, if it's not, it might not be a personal best, but how often do you get to share the platform as a 47 with the world champion, Heather Connor? Oh, I mean. Come on. You know what? That Even though that's below her personal best, that's the proper selection. That, that, that was the right move. That was I don't know if she had much more than that. Yeah. Not that today, was the right anyways. Move. Yeah. It's, it shows, and she's grabbing her back a little bit as she exits the platform, so maybe she is dealing with something. I tell you, that's what a professional does when you're a handler. It's not what you think you're capable of. It's, uh, you know, overall, it's on that day, adjust yeah. for that day. She's three for three. Agata Shabilska. 127.5 kilo, once again loaded on the bar for her. Missed this on her second. We thought possibly due to strength, but I'll tell you what. I have seen miracles happen in, pow in powerlifting. Maria T. missed her last de her second deadlift. Comes out, hits her third for the win. Oh! No. You know, I actually really thought she might fight through that one. That's a good fight. She left it on the platform. Alexandria Ratanavong, 137 and a half kilo, loaded on the bar for a seven and a half kilo jump. And are we treading in PR territory there, Leo? Yeah, it looks like this will be a tie with her PR. So well, let's see how this goes. Doing at a local meets one thing, doing at a meet yeah. with this level of competition. Wow, she might have had some more. Yeah. Oh. 140 kilo being loaded on the bar for former world champion Marissa and a 52 kilo class. Oh. Is, uh, maybe it's Heather Connor up next. Nope, no, Marissa's coming now. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> not not overly not overly nervous, is she? You know, again though, there's. I a think strategy. they're letting the clock wind down there. Um, gotcha. You know, you want to stay healthy when you're going to the yeah. World Championships, and it's actually when it's a short flight like this, you want your competitors to have that minute of rest. So you actually have the bar loaded, let it r let the bar settle for a minute. Your competitors all get that extra minute in there, and they come in fresh. Heather obviously appreciates, because she's going right close to her PR, and she could use that. Yep. I do like that Marissa came out for a little, oh. how do you do? Th that, was, that was great. <laughs> Ever the show, woman? <laughs> Don't miss your camera opportunities. Isn't that <laughs> right, Leah? That is right. Don't miss them. But listen, I, you know, I appreciate that as a competitor, it's a great thing for her to do. And as a strategy, it's a smart thing for her to do. She wants to stay healthy. She doesn't need it. Yeah. No, I, I had talked to her and Chad Wesley in the back. And um, they're eyeing the, the worlds. Obviously, France has Shizuka, Shizuka Rico, um, Naomi Alibur, just world class. Mm -hmm. Coming from France, there's going to be some battles. Stay healthy. She's going to need to be. Yeah. 142.5. Speaking of battles waiting for her at Worlds, Heather Connor. 
And despite having a massive battle awaiting her at Worlds with Turbo Tiff, decides, you know what? Load it up. You know, I wonder if we're seeing this because this is just not a. I, I'm excited. Yeah, no, we're. She's showing up. She hits this, she's going to show out. Yeah. Slow and steady. It kind of looked I like her second I attempt. I know it's a little slow, but her second attempt slow. It's kind of how she squats. It seems to be that she does the slow, controlled style. And here's the thing. That was not a struggle. She said she was going to play a conservative. I think she did. And I'm excited to see what Heather squats at Worlds because that was, that was an easy squat. She had more in her. I got to agree. I mean, it's like they're taking a <laughs> well-deserved. Um, yeah. yeah, Heather took essentially half a kilo below her personal best. If that's an indication of where Heather's at, she's yeah. going to be neck and neck with Turbo Tiff, who at the French Nationals hit a 418 total. I can't wait. It's a preview of what's to come. Now, Eric Kupperstein in the 59 kilo class, 170 kilo on the bar, 10 kilo jump from a second. Let's see how he handles it. By the way, I love that her bow matches the SP <laughs> Yeah. The women in this <laughs> Nationals are show women today. I can appreciate. Let's see how Eric handles this. Oh, little wobble at the bottom. Let's go. Stop. Uh, no. You know what? What did you think, Leah? If you're honest. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the, the Reds were the right call. He was sort of on the line before, but yeah, how about you? He was definitely flying a little close to the sun there. Had a little bit of, looks like he lost some tension in the hole and uh, might have had to cut it a little short, shorter yeah. than he would have liked. And Arnold Delgadillo in the 66 kilo class missed 175 in his opener, retook that weight, handled it with ease in his second attempt, doing a relatively big jump here at 187 and a half. Yeah. And we both thought retaking the opening weight was a good decision. Yeah. Maybe, do you think this was around where he wanted to end up for his third and take a big jump? Or what are your thoughts there? I think this is probably within two and a half, if I had to guess, within two and a half kilos of where he wanted his third to end up. And he's just trying to get as close to that as possible. So see how it goes. Because the and second one looked good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to agree. And that's the usual, you know, take is, all right, let's try to get you as close to where you wanted your third to be. It's going to be a bit of a jump. But all's well that ends well. Let's see how it goes for Arnold. That looked good. It wasn't quite as deep as his first two, but it looked good. So let's see. And Arnold, all right. You know, that is actually a PR it for is. Arnold. So he's walking away the PR nonetheless. Andrew Sordis in the 74 kilo class, 190 kilo loaded on the bar for his third attempt. Andrew Sordis woke up today and thought, oh my goodness, I'm battling the king himself. <laughs> Taylor Atwood. It's not every day you're gonna hit the platform with one of the all time greats. Just being, getting to be on the platform with some of these people is such a wonderful experience. <laughs> Listen, I've been doing commentating, you know, luckily for me at the world level, for uh, over half a decade, when I walk into that warm-up room today and I see all those world champions, I still get excited. Yeah. I still get goosebumps. I look into the crowd. There's Amanda Lawrence and, you know, Gavin Aiden and Kristen Dunsmore, Delaney Wallace. It's, it's star-studded here today. Kristen came up and said hi to me today. I was like, you're talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> 190 kilo wins, Andrew. Nice. Three whites. Yeah, it, it is. It's hard not to get. It's hard not to get a little starstruck. It, it really, it really is. These are the people who I came into the sport and immediately looked up to, and to actually get to spend time with them and talk to them and just share a platform. Sometimes it's amazing. Rodrigo Monzo, 66 kilo class. Missed 235. 
would love to get this. If he does, it's those kilos getting to tossed towards his total. Bit of a tongue twister there. Um, and he's going to need him. Jonathan Garcia is going to squat after him. You know, it looked like for a second there he's going to battle through the sticking point. He just might be able to do this here. I'm not counting him out by any means because it was getting close. Yeah. The bar slowed, and it looked like it might just continue on slowly. Let's see if you can make the adjustments. Ooh, might have cut it on depth, though. He might have cut it on depth, though. Yeah, I mean, it's up, but... Right. You know, that happens sometimes where it's a hell of a fight, and yeah. you end up to adjust cut the depth because you realize oh my gosh that was a little heavier than anticipated it's yeah. almost survival mode right it is it is and i think that that was the right call but it was super close and i appreciate the effort there it happens taylor atwood 255 kilo for his third there's taylor's dad taylor's dad is always with taylor at competitions these guys are inseparable And look at Taylor, look at it. It's 255 kilo on the bar. He is still approaching this, pacing back and forth like he does with the normal, if it's a PR even, if it's a world record. It's the same setup. That's a professional right there. Yeah. That's the GOAT mentality people talk about when they talk about Taylor Atwood. That's why he is who he is. You will not catch Taylor Atwood slipping. Taylor's dad in the background. Easy work of it. Nice. You know, yeah. you know uh, people talk about Taylor Atwood, the coaching that they do with uh, the strength guys. No stone is left unturned over there prepping Taylor, and he hits the platform like that like a professional. Yeah. You know, you don't get con to control everything. You don't know what's going to happen on a specific day, but you see the good lifters, and they control their controllables. You can make sure that you take the bar seriously, you go out there, and you approach it the same. You're well prepared every single time for whatever circumstances you have. And there I appreciate that. Very well said. That's it. There's only so much you have control of. Handle your variables and looking to take control here. Jonathan Garcia in the 66 kilo class, 268 kilo. That will be an American record. Looking to make history in the 66 kilo class as well as grab some more kilos towards his total. And we need to pay attention. There's a battle here, but you can't help but compare him. Let's see where his total ends up. Where it's going to stack up with the rest of the 66 kilo class across the globe. Because it is a stacked class internationally as well. No. You know, Leah, we both looked at each other, and I think we're both saying the same thing. Respectfully, we're going to wait for the judges, but we both are thinking, well, well. Yeah, I mean, it was close, but I didn't think that one was there. Um, Quick look here at how the squats ended up at the end of this session. You know, we had some misses, but everybody got a squat on the board. Nobody's bombed out. No major surprises with some of the with the with the bigger names here. We're gonna take a short break, 20 minutes. Don't go anywhere. We will return on the platform for the bench press session from Six Pack Lapidat. And Leah Goldring. Leah See you in 20. A lot, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Heather Connor. I'm a two-time IPF world champion in the 47 kilo weight class. We are in the great state of Texas. I haven't seen anybody walk around with a cowboy hat yet, so I'm pretty underwhelmed with that. Um, but I did just get in yesterday, so I'm going to keep my hopes high. Uh, I'm here for Powerlifting America Nationals. It's very brand new federation. 
Um, and I'm here to get my ticket to IPF Worlds in South Africa. Um, it stems from a lot of things, but if I had to put it in one spot, uh, being a female of a smaller stature, especially one with scoliosis, uh, growing up playing sports wasn't easy for me. Not easy as in I couldn't do it, but people didn't believe in me the way that I believed in myself. And it's hard at that time as a child to tell an adult, like, I can do this. So um, I had to not just speak it into existence, I had to show it. And um, a lot of times I was denied the opportunity to do certain sports because of my size. I was always too small, I was this, I was that. So being in a sport where size really doesn't matter, it's just strictly strength. I mean, I think I've proven a lot in the sport and um, the passion is being driven because of the fact that it was just taken away from me as a child. And now I'm able to be in a position where I'm in control of everything. And everything that I wasn't able to do as a child, I'm able to be successful at now. It's kind of like, I told you so kind of moment. <laughs> always, so when people ask me, they say, well, have you always been gun the sport? No, I bombed out at my first competition. And it sucked because of that competitive mindset. I've always been good at anything that I've done, you know. Um, so for to experience failure like that, I know what failure tastes like. And it was just very eye-opening for me. And it allowed me to say, you know what, I don't want to feel this way. So I worked my butt off to get where I am now. Um, so it's, I've always been very competitive. The winner mindset of me wants to be like, I want to be IPF world champion all over again. I didn't get to compete last year and I just need to make up for it. That's where my mind instantly wants to go. But this is the first year I'm being challenged. You know, not to discredit anybody in the past that has challenged me, but man, I'm being challenged this year. And I, I'm heavily looking forward to that because this is the first time I get to push myself past my limits because I don't have another choice. Like if I, you know, go out there and say, oh, I'm just gonna do this, I'm going to lose. You know, I know I have somebody right at my heels. I know I, I have somebody that wants it just as badly as I do. So going into the world's, um, you know, this year, it's just, for me, it's how bad do I want it? And I want it bad. It's not gonna be easy. <laughs> it's not gonna be easy for me, and it's not gonna be easy for anybody going against me. You know, they're not gonna make it easy for me. I don't want them to. I never have wanted a competitor to just go easy on me. Um, so going into Worlds, it's, it's gonna be a good one this year. It's gonna be a fight and I'm a fighter. So be looking out for that one. <laughs>
and I am in the 66 kilo weight class. Just about everything, as cliche as that sounds, I obviously people know I have a bit of a history. I qualified for IPF Worlds back in 2019. I didn't get the opportunity to go uh, due to the pandemic back in 2020. And I, I developed a, a streak of uh, unfortunate performances ever since, you know, uh, 2019. So this is my next opportunity to qualify. So I'm taking it quite seriously. I've been powerlifting for about eight years now. And so when I won the opportunity to go to Worlds, it, it basically solidified and confirmed everything that I had worked for uh, up, you know, up to that point. And you know, granted with everything that happened and there are people that had, you know, that were in much worse situations. And, you know, I don't, I don't, um, I guess I don't, f I try my best not to feel sorry for myself because of the lost opportunity because other people have, have had it and had it worse during that period of time. But at the same time, I can't deny the fact that eight years of work felt like they were just stripped from me. And I think the most difficult part about that is that, at least at the time, we didn't know when the next opportunity was gonna come, right? I think it was well over a year before the next opportunity uh, came. And unfortunately, like I said earlier, you know, uh, it wasn't my day, you know, it wasn't the best prep, things happen, you know, and, I lost that opportunity again. So I think the most frustrating part about it the second time around was that there were factors that, you know, I could control that I, you know, just didn't manage to the best of my abilities. And so for that, I obviously blamed myself at the time. And, you know, it's been kind of rough coming back from that, from those two, uh, uh, you know, different periods of, you know, in, in terms of my training. but. You know, looking back on it at the same time, I have a much different perspective as to, okay, where can I go now? I've, you know, I've almost made it to the top, right? At least in, in the USA, I did at one point, and now I'm back down and climbing my way back up. So what can I learn from those experiences to apply now to make myself better, to be in a better position for that next opportunity? And I think ultimately that's, the silver lining, if you will, in this situation. And it only, it only makes me more excited for tomorrow.
And we're back at the Powerlifting America National Championships where we have the 47 kilo women, 52 and 57 kilo women, and on the men's side, the 59, 66, and 74 kilo men. Amongst those world champions and uh, you know legends of the game like Heather Connor, Marissa Inda, Taylor Atwood, and the battle between Rodrigo Manzo and Jonathan Garcia We'll have to see how this full unfolds. Obviously, Rodrigo Manzo missing his last two squats. Moving forward with just his opener. It's not the way he wanted to start the day, but it's not how you start, it's how you finish. He's got a big deadlift. Can he cover ground? We'll have to see, because Jonathan Garcia also missed his third squat. We'll have to see how it unfolds. We will. I mean, there's always something about going in there with the deadlift specialist. You never know what they're gonna pull but uh, he certainly made it a little bit more difficult for himself. <laughs> this is true, this is true. I mean, uh, also even looking ahead, when you're talking about the 66 kilo class, you can't help but compare them to the rest of the field. Yeah. You know, the world champion, Pena from France, but even in USVI, Joe Jordan hit a 700 kilo total, Pena capable of a 700 kilo total, Eddie Berglund from Sweden, junior world champion, capable of a 700 kilo total, all of those gentlemen, Y there's nowhere to hide in the 66 kilo class. So we'll pay close attention and see where Jonathan Garcia ends up, see where Manzo ends up. What kind of a total are they gonna bring to the World Championships as well? But first up, we got Cindy Vaughn in the 47 kilo class. She will have 52.5 kilo loaded on the bar for her. What do you think, Leah? Nice, easy opener. Yeah. That's how you want to do it. All of her other lifts seemed in the pocket, as yeah. they say, uh, a little below her PRs, but she left the platform grabbing her back in the squat, so probably dealing with some kind of an injury. If it's not hampering her on the bench press, maybe she can go all out. <laughs> Eric Kupperstein in the 59 kilo class, opening with 60 kilo. Eric just looking to get on the board here. Nice, smooth, easy opener. Hopefully no major drama with the openers. However, we've seen it happen before, Leah. People fly a little close to the sun, a little technical difficulty. Wow, that's a very, very narrow. narrow. <laughs> Working, relying on the triceps here today. It, you gotta wonder, he, he had mentioned that he's been battling some injuries. You yeah, know. you're 100% right. Alexandria, Ratanavong, 62.5 kilo on the bar for her in the 57 kilo class. Look smooth. <laughs> look like you want an opener to look. Yeah, nice easy opener. Up next is Agata Shabilska with 65 kilo in the bar for her, looking to turn the tide a little bit. She hit her opener, missed her next two squats, and would like to get back onto the positive momentum here. It looks like she's opening with about uh, with two and a half kilos under her personal best, so I'm curious to see how this goes. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, with bench press, two and a half kilos. Yeah. You know, it's a big jump. <laughs> it's uh, things fall off real quick. Oh wow! That that was that was nice and easy. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things. I I don't think uh, Agatha had competed since 2019 or very early 2020. So I was I was kind of curious to see. You know, a lot can happen in that amount of time. I agree. Heather Corner, 47 kilo queen here. Winning world titles, smashing world records, really taking the limit for the 47 kilo class and running with it for a long time. Looked like she would be unopposed. And here we are in 2022, finding herself in probably one of the biggest anticipated battles of the sport with Turbo Tip waiting for her in South Africa. But first, she's got to solidify her total, and she is not playing it, you know, overly conservative, judging by a squat 70 kilo on the bar for her opener here. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Yeah, you know, honestly, it, it just makes me excited because it, if this is her, her safe day, what does she have at Worlds? And it's going to be a really fun world to meet. It's just going to be a lot more competition in the 47 and 52 kilo class than, than we've seen, I think, in a while. And I'm just, it, it makes me happy. It just makes me very excited. And I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, the growth of the sport in the 47 kilo and 52s. And I'm going to have to agree with you. If this is a conservative day for Heather, um, you know, Turbo Tiff, we know, has registered a 418 at the French Nationals. So mm -hmm. all eyes on where Heather ends up today, if we're going to do any comparison. But yeah, it's going to be a battle. And the 52s, speaking of former world champion, Marissa Indy here walking out to a 97 and a half kilo opener. Also has some French shooters, as they say, Shizuka, Shizuka, Rico, and Naomi Alibur, the one-two punch from France, both of them registering unofficial world record totals at the French Nationals. And there's more 52s around the world. Andy Riley. Okay, yeah. 52 is really, re really heating up, and it's going to be a huge competition to even get on the podium at 52. Um, you know, I can't. I, I've I've rewatched those French nationals performances. <laughs> I don't know how many times. They're remarkable. Um, I do want to say I think that that 97.5 kilo opener from Marissa moved beautifully. Um, so I'm excited to see what she she does in her next two. Agreed. Yeah, she's always been. You know, she has a big bench on her, yeah. and she could dead as well. She's she's not really a specialist. Like some people come out as specialists. She could do all three. Andrew Sardis in the 74 kilo class, 115 kilo loaded on the bar for his opener. Good opener. Yep, three white lights. See the Joey Flex Squad in the house here. Arnold Delgadillo in the men's 66 kilo class, opening with 125 kilo on the bar for him. Arnold missed his opening squat, corrected that, ended up where we think he might have been hoping to be on his third. You know, still a PR. Let's see if he could handle this opener better than he did in his squat. Sometimes you see some aggressive arches. Yeah. There we go, a drama-free opener for Arnold. He's probably yeah, like, okay, nice well, that's <laughs> He's like, okay, thank you, because I don't need drama every opener. No, and you got to wonder, <laughs> was it just like the nerves of being out there the first time, and it's like you get past it, and now you're good to go. And, you know, yeah. I never want to see somebody miss their opener. Honestly, it's... You know, when you see it at Worlds, it becomes when someone's backs to the wall mm -hmm. in the third. Rodrigo Manzo in the 66s. 155 kilo on the bar for him. Got his opener on the board. Missed his second and third squat. Looking to gain a little bit of ground. You gotta wonder if he's thinking in his team, 
do they just go three for three and grab kilos? Or is it like, look at, let's go all out. Mm. Oh, wow. Talk about go all out. That You know, and we can't see if his, his butt was staying on the bench, but that was definitely more difficult than you want an opener to look. Yeah, yes. you know what? I'm not sure if we got the butt cam footage here for a replay, but uh, yeah, I think the butt might have raised, rose yeah, up there. Yeah, it was enough of a struggle, and you could see him pushing off that I was, uh, you know. You know, uh, oof. Yeah. that's three in a row he's missed, and now he's only got a squat opener. You hope he could get himself on the board in the bench press, but things are not going as planned. Jonathan Garcia, 162 and a half. It's the liftoff, Jonathan, a very big subtotal. It's the deadlift that he loses ground. Ooh, nice work there with his opener. Yeah. Nicely done. Yeah, he's he's always been, and there's a shot. There's the butt cam there. You could see he keeps in contact. Well, there's a little skip, but it, it never fully leaves it. You got to keep some contact there with the bench press, so it's difficult from that angle. Yeah, it's it's only got to be that smallest bit, but right. you know, it's you got to see daylight right through. So there's movement, and then you know the other side is still touching. The judges there can see right through if there's daylight or not. And Taylor Atwood, the king is back. One eighty-seven point five. Look at, I think he's gonna go all out on the bench press. He played a conservative on squats, but if he's opening with one eighty-seven and a half. I think we're going to see a little something, something here in the bench press event. I agree. Yeah. So, I mean, I know he's been playing conservative and dealing with some injuries, but it seems like this is working. So, again, you see the professionalism in this man mm -hmm. approaching. You know, it doesn't matter if it's like even in the warm up room for those squats, he's handling weights far below his, his top end, and it was dead serious in there. He's got music playing, he's handling it seriously. That yeah, was easy. <laughs> you know what? When it's the strength guys, you know, they're you're very rarely going to see the bar misloaded for Taylor, mm -hmm. and he's backing himself into the wall. Yeah. They're so well researched. Very rarely fumble the ball. Everyone can make accidents, but it's certainly never through negligence or lack of prep. When it comes to certain teams and strength guys, it's certainly one of them. 57.5 being loaded on the bar now for Cindy Vaughn. We're in the 47 kilo class again. Cindy went three for three in the squats, nailed her opener, and looking to take a five kilo jump, which for a 47 kilo woman, that's a decent sized jump. It is a decent sized jump, yeah. Opener moved well. Opener did, and... We'll have to see how five kilo slows her down, or? We'll see. It, it looks to be only two and a half kilos under her personal best. But uh, uh -oh. That's a shame. Yeah, I wonder. It, bench press is one of those things where um, you miss groove. It looks like it's strength. You miss groove. You're not going to finish it. I've seen miracles happen once again where because a misgroove makes you not be able to muscle through it. It's not like a deadlift. It's not like the squat necessarily where a misgroove and it looks like, oh, my gosh, there's no way you're going to come back from that, though. But they do. You get the groove proper, and all of a sudden weight moves like it should have, and it's like, well, what happened the last time? Right. I, it's, it's, it's a little bit more technical. It's a little bit more fickle. Um, and, w uh, you know, we'll see. Just because she didn't get it, I, who knows? Yeah, no, it's definitely the most fickle of the lifts. And Eric Kupperstein, 65 kilo on the bar for him, 5 kilo jump. Now, you had mentioned he's coming in there dealing with some injuries. We do see a very narrow grip. So, yeah, and it, it just looks like this is very much under what his top recorded bench is. And you look at that. 
You yeah, look at that narrow. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's obviously not the most optimal no. way to approach the bar if you're looking to get kilos on that bar. You know, it's increasing the increasing the range of motion, and it's it's very tricep dominant. So now I do see as like a little aside something that I had sort of motion to you about. Uh, they are having the lifters tie their hair back now on the bench press. Um, yeah, so you see if the head comes off up up off the bench, obviously. If the hair is covering that and you can't see if the hair comes up, it's an advantage. Even if it comes up just a little bit, that's an infraction you're getting away with, and they're not going to get it, let you get away with that here. Alexandria, 67 and a half kilos, five kilo jump. It's a big jump. What do you think, Leah? I, th I think that moved well. How big of a yeah. jump would you anticipate she takes for a third, though? What was that? That was 60. Five or 67? 67 and a half. That was 67 and a half, okay. I think she goes for the, I think she goes for the PR. I think she goes for the five kilo jump. Oh I mean. <laughs> Look at if you're going to hit a PR, no better place to do it. I mean, I know I would. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just. God, I love some of these setups. Yeah, driving the traps into the bench to base herself, pushing off against the bar. Agatha, 70 kilo. Oh, nice, that moved very well. Look at, if she had a bit of a dicey squat session, regaining some form in the bench session. Technical difficulties will walk you through it though. And this is when this is when I really earn my money with my uh, <laughs> commentary. I earn my slice of pizza. Heather Connor, multiple time world champion, seventy two point five kilo on the bench, on the bar for her bench. And I would expect this to be a very manageable weight for her. Oh, oh no. That's a little bit surprising. That was that is surprising. But again, like uh, you know, bench is fickle. Uh Look it's possible she comes back and just nails that. For those, you know, I know, I know you can't hear. You're just listening, but um, it didn't get far off the chest. Not sure what the what the situation happened there. No. Hold on. So wait, is this matching, Marissa? Marissa Inda, 102.5 kilo loaded on the bar for her. Five kilo jump from her opener, driving the traps into the bench. Marissa's previous personal best. 102.5? Andrew Sardis playing it up for the crowd here. You know, don't waste your camera time, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew, living in the moment <laughs> like he should. 120 kilo on the bar for his second attempt. Five kilo jump from his opener. Still work, but he looks wow. like he's good for it. Yeah, he's got it. That was work. Does he have? Let's yeah. see what the judges say. Three white lights. Now, when you see something like that, I'm anticipating a smaller jump. Yeah. That was work, and the, and the drop off on the bench press in particular comes quick. I would be shocked if he went up more than two and a half after that. Because that, that was work. That was probably more work than you want a second attempt to look. Arnold Delgadillo. In the 66 kilo class now, 130 kilo on the bar for him. This is a five kilo jump for Arnold. Arnold 
started his day with a miss, came back, and hasn't missed since. I hope I didn't just jinx all them. Yeah, you better not have. <laughs> Nicely done. Well, that looked easy. So, yeah, let's see. Three white lights. Nice. Arnold picks up some more kilo. And Rodrigo Manzo needs this 155 if he's going to stay in it. Obviously got another bench attempt after this, but he would love to get himself back on track the pressure off himself yeah great deadlift but you really don't want to dig yourself into too much of a hole um or you know you're, you're afraid to say it aren't I, you? I'm, not, I'm not gonna say <laughs> it I, I am not gonna say it no it's like in baseball when somebody's pitching the perfect game you don't say anything mm -mm. oh nice wow Let's see if the butt stayed down. We can't yeah. see from this view. This looks from my view much better, but again. And then we go oh, oh, good. And, and he does Great. it. And look at that. Just like that, Rodrigo Manzo is back in the hunt. You know, all is right when you get that lift in there. I'm interested in seeing if they make a big jump on their third or they go more conservative just trying to grab kilos. You know, they're starting to fall behind. How far behind? Well, we're going to find out right now. Jonathan Garcia. 170.5, you know what that means. It's a record looking to make history on his path to the IPF World Championships, Jonathan Garcia. Jonathan known for a monstrous subtotal. Piling on the kilos. Nice. Nicely done. That's a that I that's a new record right there. Up. We got a we got one red. Two whites, I mean, he's got enough. But I wonder what that one red was. What did somebody see? Didn't see the infraction from this side. The two um, side judges gave him the white, so did not see the infraction live. Two whites is all you need, though. Yeah. And look at this, Taylor Atwood, an American record, 196. Loaded on the bar for a second attempt. If you thought, well, is Taylor gonna pull it back for the bench as well? We got our answer. The answer's no. And like you said, you really have to respect somebody who knows that they're having to play play it more conservative, they're working with an injury, to keep their head in the game this well, to still, you know, have that later squat session, know it's not gonna be their best day, and come back out here and still do this on bench press. I really respect that. That's a lot of mental focus there. You gotta pick your battles, especially when you're dealing with an injury, especially with the world championships around the corner. And if there's anybody who knows how to pick their battles, it's Taylor Atwood. Try to catch this man on an off day. He's going to get the most out of his body no matter what he's dealing with. You know, when injuries happen, you got to put forth what you have on that day. 196. Self lift off. Oh, wow. Beautiful. 74 kilo, the king, building nice. momentum in the bench press. You know, I got to say, I probably started to turn blue holding my breath on that one. I get really excited. It's, it's great. And Cindy Vaughn opening up the third attempt 
with the 57.5. She had missed this on her second. Paying attention to the scorecard here, seeing what Taylor Atwood puts in for his third. We know it's obviously going to be a record. Cindy Vaughn attempting the same weight she missed on her second. Driving those traps into the bench. Pushing against the bar to keep herself in place. Self lift off as well. Oh. Like not today. It was a good effort, you know. Sometimes it's just not there. So do you have any uh, guesses where Taylor's gonna go? Well, <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking 200. What do you think? Yeah, well, it just loaded up. Oh, wait. Oh, did they have it up yeah, there. I'm going to cheat on you. I'm going to say 202.5, oh. and I'm going I'm to bet you like $500 well, on that one. This is how we know you're the professional as you actually <laughs> looked at the board. <laughs> Heather Connor, multiple time. Oh, sorry. We're, we're viewing Heather Connor. Eric Copperstein is up next with 70 kilo. Heather waiting in the wings. And it looks like Eric might be letting the clock wind down. And keeping the bar loaded so everybody, again, gets their break. And Heather will come up next with 72.5 kilo. Winding down, so Taylor Atwood's 202.5. If I'm not mistaken, I'm wondering what he had missed previously. He's got a checklist. He wants to enter into the 200 kilo range for his bench press. And here we are, 202.5. PR territory for the GOAT. But first, Heather Connor, 72.5 kilo being loaded on the bar for her. Missed it on her second, retaking it now on her third. You know this wasn't as to script. She's got the world championships around the corner. You don't want to get, you know, even though it's the bench, the back gets tight and you start failing, gets tightened up. You don't want to go too crazy here. There's a lot at stake. And again, this is, she might not be happy with this right now. It might not be as planned, but we all know that Heather is capable of this. And uh, she's got to get to Worlds, punch her ticket, stay healthy. Yeah, she's previously hit 75 kilo. This is within the her means. Look at she's getting a fist pump this time. Now she's, <laughs> she's ramping it up a little bit this time, talking to the crowd. Oh, no, she's okay. You know what? She decided, I'm going to go out there, fist pump everybody, thank them for the time, and leave. Bless up. It's it's a good strategy. Worlds is around the corner. Worlds is around the corner. She also has a World Games, correct? Is she doing that? You know what? Her schedule is intense, is the word I would use. World Games around the corner. World Championships around the corner. Um, I think she's even got an invite for another competition later on uh, in, in France. So, yeah, y you want to stay as healthy as possible. For another, you know, two, two and a half, five kilo, it's just really not worth it. No, she's doing what she needs to do right now, not what's showy, and I think that that's a smart and important thing to do. It's what a veteran would do, the veteran move. Now, Alexandria, 72.5 kilo loaded on the bar for her third and final bench, five kilo jump from her second. And this would be a personal best. <laughs> oh, it is 
a struggle. Uh, wow. What a fight, though. Yeah, no, she left it on the platform, that's for I, sure. I respect that so much. That, that was a great fight. It wasn't going to be from lack of will, that's for sure. Nope. This also, well, this is Agatha. And you were about to say, is this, uh, are we looking at another PR here? I think we are. And uh, again, this is somebody who I don't think has competed in a while, so I was curious to see how much it, and it looks like she's done some work. Agata Shobilska. Two kilo class. They're going to put five kilo onto the total. Oh, come on, come. What do you think? It is. Good enough. I, you know, and from our view, I actually thought that was the right call. It came up unevenly. Of course, we can't see. You know, her butt on the bench, she did get that one red, but it was a great fight. All right, former world champion Marissa Inda now. 105 kilo loaded on the bar for her third and final. This is a two and a half kilo personal best. You're not going to believe me, but Marissa's actually a master's lifter, still going for PRs. Which, as someone who's about to be a master's lifter, I love seeing. I'm just, it's amazing. Ooh, the brakes come on, though. Just a bit too Good much effort. today. And great shoes, too. <laughs> Andrew Sardis. 74 kilo class, 122.5 kilo being loaded on the bar. A conservative two and a half kilo jump for him. Which I think was the right move. Yeah, we thought 120 was work. Yeah. Obviously two and a half kilo jump is the smallest jump he could take. Slow stalls, but keeps going. I, I see the hips moving. I'm wondering if the butt stays down because there's a lot of movement on the hips. Can't really see from this angle. Can't see it, but we'll see. It's a great fight. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you see the butt cam there. Definitely, it's like we were saying before, not movement, but there's daylight right through there, and that's when you know. I remember my first coach when I got into lifting, she's like, it can be one fraction of one inch of one cheek, but you have to keep your butt on the bench. <laughs> it just can't be daylight all the way through. Arnold Delgadillo in the 66 kilo class, 135 kilo loaded on the bar for him, five kilo jump from his second. work. Looks like he's going to push through the sticking point. Slowed but never fully stalled and is rewarded with three white lights. You know, I know not everybody loves watching bench press, but there is something about watching someone grind out one of those super long bench presses that like max effort lifts. I, I love it. When it's a display of heart, and if you want to see heart, here comes Rodrigo Manzo. Missed his opener, came back Hit it in a second and looking to grab another seven and a half kilo. That 155 was, was work. He was definitely going to have to empty the tank if he's going to complete this. But this is seven and a half kilo he needs if he's going to keep his world championships dream alive. Oh, 
looks a little unsteady. He hasn't got the start to name yet. There he goes. Uh oh. Big chest sink. You're seeing a couple of the guys just really sink that bar in. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. You lose if you lose a little bit of tension. It's very difficult to regain at the bottom. Um, yeah. Started off a little uneasy. And Jonathan Garcia now, 173 kilo. Obviously, he took the American record in his second. Looking to extend that in his third to 173. Just building away on that subtotal. That's a handsome subtotal, ladies and gentlemen. 430.5. He hits this. He sends a signal to the other 66s of the world. I'm coming. Patient press right there. Nicely done. Never loses form. Nice. You know, that didn't actually even look hard. I mean, <laughs> it looked like effort, but not like, you no. know. Yeah, I'll agree with you there. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Some of these guys, their form is so on point. Yeah. Even when the fight comes, they're tight in the pocket. No yeah. technical breakdowns. Yeah, you see the points where it's there's obvious effort, but they, they have the form down. They have their lift down so much now Taylor Atwood 202.5 being loaded on the bar this also is an American record he broke it in his second look and extend it in his third the king is back adding to his resume when they open up the record books when this young man is retired you're gonna see a sea of Taylor Atwood Taylor Atwood Taylor Atwood mm-hmm the reign of terror continues. You could line up his videos one after the other and this entire setup would look identical. <laughs> well said. Probably in the warm-up room as well. Two hundred and two point five kilo. Oh wow, Taylor Atwood nice. looks like he's done it. Three white lights and redemption for Taylor Atwood nice. in the bench press. He's wanted to right that wrong for a while now. Comes back, gets the big bench, enters into the two hundreds, shakes the hands, makes a little bit of history today on the platform. That was beautiful. And that will close off our bench press session. And what a way to close it off. The king himself making a little bit of history. You do not want to go anywhere, though. We have the deadlifts coming up. Let's see how the story ends. Some people want to rebound. Some people want to even catch up. And you never can actually tell until the last deadlift is pulled. We've seen upsets happen. We've seen some huge come from behinds. I'm obviously speaking about the 66 kilo battle. It's not over yet. Don't go anywhere. 20 minutes from Six Pack Lavadat. And Leah Goldring. See you later. <laughs> I'm Taylor Atwood, 74 kilogram powerlifter, two time world champion, and the current drug tested strongest man ever. <laughs> that means the world to me. Uh, that means a lot being able to represent USA because uh, growing up here, um, I've, I, I've played football and we, we sing the national anthem and when I won my first world championship, being able to hear the national anthem while I was standing on the podium, that was like, man, this is what I worked so hard for. My dad has been able to instill a lot in terms of being competitive, but staying competitive. But what I think 
like the initial mustard seed and where it's grown today, uh, it was with my cousins growing up. Like we were constantly battling against each other. And at the time I didn't know what that was doing to me <laughs> now. Um, but growing up, I was with them every weekend. We were playing sports, every sport you could think of, even racing in the house down the stairs to go to dinner. Like it was like we were competing at everything. So that kind of, I think, sparked the competitiveness in me. And then my dad uh, just kind of helped me stay in that realm um, and, and kind of guide me and give me like strategies of how to stay competitive. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think there's just moments in everyone's life where uh, they find something that like just makes them whole inside and it's not just the powerlifting aspect of it it's it's the camaraderie but it's also for me the competitiveness of the sport like i'm i'm in this to be the best uh, and that's what i s strive for every time i work out this is qualifying me for the world championship in june at, at ipf so it does mean something. Um, I am injured at the moment, so I'm not going to be able to put up the numbers that I want um, on squat or deadlift, but bench press I'm very excited about. Uh, so in terms of kind of just gauging where I'm at right now, uh, prep had been going very well up until about three weeks ago. So I, I mean, this meet, I was taking it very seriously, was hoping to come in and, and hit some really good numbers just to kind of gauge again, just to see where we're at heading into the world championship. Um, I'm ready for Powerlifting America Nationals first ever uh, competition. And to be here and to represent America again at the World Championship is, it means the world to me. No pun intended. I am here with Chance Mitchell. Um, we're going to see him later on, uh, well, tomorrow, actually, tomorrow, yeah. in, in a battle for the 93s. But today you're here, actually, because you coach Joe Jordan, who is the 66-kilo champion on USVI. He's going to be at the World Championships. You're witnessing the battle here. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, Jonathan looked really, really good. Squat, he's a big subtotal guy. I think... Um, you know, his, his bench was super impressive. He got that, uh, what was it, 170 or 167, something like that? Was um, that third? Yeah, the totals are right up there. So he had a 260 squat in a 173, 173 bench press. Yeah. So that's world class, right? Like that's getting a medal for sure at Worlds, right? That 175-ish is probably what you need. You would think in the bench press anyways. The big question is, how do you think Jonathan looks like he's stacking up with the rest of the 66s, including Joe Jordan, your athlete, mm -hmm. at the World Championships. Yeah, so Jonathan right now uh, squatted 10 kilos more than Joe, which Joe's leading the nominations right now, and, and benched three over. Um, and then obviously we'll see what happens on deadlift, depending on where he ends up. You know, if he goes up to 270-ish, he's right up there for 700. He's right up there for 700. Yeah. 700 kilos seems to be that sweet spot for a number everyone needs you know this world championships previously it would be 700 you're going to win it yep. this one and i know you know mm -hmm. with with having a dog in the race here uh 700 might just get you podium yeah 
You know, we could have a podium of 700s in a 66 kilo class. Never seen that before. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, we'll see. I think Ilya was one of the, the uh, 66s that um, could have done over 700, but he won't be going because of the Russia Correct. issues, right? Yep. Um, and then Pena is coming in with a little bit of an injury, so we'll see how that goes, praying for him, right? Um, so this is going to be key, obviously, and then we'll see what the nominations sh show, right? Yeah, add into there, obviously, Eddie Berglund from Sweden. Mm -hmm. All of these individuals, veterans of the game. It is going to be too tight to call, yep. and you're here taking scouting notes. <laughs> yep. Take it in for your boy Joe Jordan. Um, how about some early predictions for the World Championships? I'm just queuing you up here. I know what it's going to be, but oh give yeah. it to me. Oh, yeah. You know Joe is coming and ready. The strength's been great. We kind of uh, kind of pull a little of a Taylor Atwood and kind of hide the big stuff. Oh, but, um, wow. You know, he's, he's doing great. You know, it just, you know, we'll, we'll see. Again, I really want to see Pena show up 100%. I want to see Jonathan, you know, or, or Rodrigo pull up 100% and have it be a battle, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's the way you want to see it. Uh, Pena, obviously, the reigning champion, coming to defend his title. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a battle, one that none of us can miss. So we're going to have to figure out. We're gonna, we'll figure out on the platform, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Manzo or it's going to be Garcia. We'll find out after the deadlift session. Don't go anywhere.
and welcome back to the Powerlifting America National Championships where we have the 47, 52, and 57 kilo women. And on the men's side, we have the 59, 66, and 74 kilo men. <laughs> We've seen, uh, obviously, Taylor Atwood smashing a 202.5 kilo bench press, extending the American record. Jonathan Garcia in the 66 kilo class hitting a 173 kilo third bench, extending the American record there. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with Taylor Atwood. Um, I mean, I expect to be impressed with Taylor Atwood, but just how he's kept his, his, game, his game face on and how he's kept his cool, uh, knowing that he's coming in, not feeling his best, and just still making the best meat out of it that, that he can. Yeah, we're ex expecting him. He's gonna be opening up rather light in the deadlift, so he's probably gonna settle it back down. Obviously, looking ahead at the World Championships, still just around the corner. And Sydney Vaughn, 105 kilo for her opener. Looks good. Good first attempt, yeah. That's how you want your first attempts to look. You know, was it Cindy that we saw earlier? She did went a little bit light on squat, and uh, we saw her holding her back a little bit. Uh, I think it was. Okay, because I, I'm just looking at her her deadlift. Her posted PR is 145. So either she's planning big jumps, or it does look like there's something bothering her today. So it's another impressive one. Former 52 kilo world champion Marissa Inda, opening with 150 kilo. Nicely done. Good left. Now that's a nice, light, safe opener. Solidifies her total. And um, obviously, the end goal is the world. So that pretty much will cinch up her pathway to the world championships. Agata up next, also in the 52 kilo class, 155 kilo on the bar. Well, she's going to have bragging rights to say, look, I opened up heavier than the returning world champion. Yes, she is. Agatha missed a couple squats, steadied herself in the bench. Gets. Well, there's the total, so. Yeah, solidifies her total. White lights from the judges. I think that's already a PR total for Agatha, too. 160 kilo on the bar for Alexandria. You just want to get on the board. Whoa, that's it. That's how you want your opener to look. A lot of nice. room left. Yeah. Very nice smooth lift. Heather Connor coming out for 396 kilo. That's an American. Oh, 109. Sorry, 396 kilo. <laughs> sorry, that is <laughs> 180 kilo, 396 pounds. Sorry. Um, yeah, that would be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, uh, this is already <laughs> something, but yes, that would be. Uh, I just want to. I'd spoken to Heather in the warm up room, and she talked about the bench press. Her back tightened up. That's why she did not opt to take her third bench press. Looking ahead to the World Championships, it's not worth it. Not for those kilos. No. Not at all. There's the hair flip. That was smooth. Nice. Her deadlift is an art form. <laughs> okay, like it is. It is just beautiful. Um. And, you know, I don't, I hope everybody appreciates w how remarkable it is to watch a 47 kilo athlete open at 180 kilos on a day where she's playing it conservative. <laughs> that is bonkers. 
Yeah, when you're getting close to four times body weight, and that's a conservative opener. <laughs> Eric Kupperstein, 185 kilo on the bar for his opener in the 59 kilo class. On the hook grip. He's, yeah, double overhand hook grip. He's got the deadlift arms going, that's for sure. <laughs> Smooth, easy. Nice. Multiple time world champion, Eric Kupperstein. Won several Masters titles, been powerlifting for decades in the game. Andrew Sardis now, 74 kilo. 185 kilo on the bar for his opener. Andrew is really loving the camera right now. <laughs> Can't blame him. It's a bit of work for an opener. <laughs> Little high side head snap, though. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at the replay here. Oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, you know. It looks slower live. I, don't <laughs> I think it gets confusing sometimes when you have people who look like they take a little bit longer and a little bit more patience off the ground, especially in a conventional deadlift where you expect to see it leave the ground more quickly. But yeah, it moved fast. Arnold Delgadillo, 66 kilos, 197.5 on the bar for Arnold's opener. Again, as soon as these lifters hit their openers, their total is solidified. Three yeah, white lights. Jonathan Garcia, in the midst of a battle. He's gonna have some body attempts with the squat and the bench. Step 66 around. kilo class, opening with 230 kilo. Now we had said he is a subtotal lifter, usually loses some ground when it comes to the deadlift. It's the grip that becomes an issue for Jonathan. He's gonna have to hang on to the bar if he's gonna hang on to his dream for representing US at the IPF World Championships. And just by chance, Manzo's best lift is the deadlift. Yeah, this should be fun to watch. Uh. Yeah, opener's nice and easy. Nicely done. Taylor Atwood coming out 245 kilo, obviously well within his means. Taylor hits this. He's guaranteed his spot on the U.S. national team. He'll be in South Africa vying for the world title, and then that's just one step closer to SPD's Invitational in Sheffield. The biggest prize pool of modern times on the table. But first, he's got to lock this up. Easy. And you know, you see how easy that it is. You know how much underneath his full capabilities that weight is. And look at how he stepped up to the bar. Yeah. You know, he's approaching it as though this is full on opener and he's in the midst of a battle. Mm hmm. Yeah. Rodrigo Manzo, 6'6 six, six kilo class, 272.5 kilo loaded on the bar. We're over 600 pounds already, and it's his opener. Now, this is still big for Rodrigo. It looks like his strategy now is I've lost ground. I need to regain that ground 
no sense playing conservative. The only reason why I'm here is to make it to the IPF Worlds. We're going all in. Yeah, I mean, he dug himself a little bit of a hole, but let's see. This looks like it's five kilos under his personal. We're close. Yeah. And it's not how you start. It's how you end. He has the ability to pull himself into a storybook ending and seal the open numerals. Oh, wow. Smooth. Well, the oh. opener moves like it's an empty bar. <laughs> so there's that. He's got that going for him. This is a big deadlift for a 6'6 six, six kilo lifter. Yeah. Very smooth there. And just like that, Manzo solidifies his total. How far can he cover the ground? It really depends on Jonathan Garcia. And if Jonathan's going to be hanging on to the bar and hanging on to his lead. Cindy Vaughn, 47 kilo class, 112.5 kilo. That's a pretty big jump, Leah. It is a pretty big jump. Yeah, so, you know, maybe whatever she's dealing with is feeling okay. Decides yep. to go for it. If we were a little conservative earlier, that's, that's going out the window now. Let's see what happens. I mean, she did solidify her total. She did. And I, I, think, she's, I think she's done what's important. She solidified her total. The 105 was what she knew she could get, and now it's like, let's see. Let's see where we can go from here. Oh, wow, okay, well, that could have been an opener right yeah. there. Yeah. It looks like. No, I don't know, are you thinking 10 more kilo? Uh, you know, I think, I'm looking, I'm looking right now and it looks like her deadlift PR is 145. I obviously haven't talked to Cindy, I don't know what's going on. We did see her holding her back. Uh, seems like maybe she was having some trouble. That looked great. I think if her back's still feeling well, Maybe she decides, let's let's see what we've got there, you know? 10 kilo, 10 kilo plus, why yeah, not? why Last not? Last lift of the day, now Marissa Inda, former 52 kilo world champion, coming out, shaking hands. I think she's just going to walk away from this. Yeah. You know, I, I tell you what, it's strategy, ladies and gentlemen. We said, oh, there it is. It's there it is. She told me in the warm-up room she's going to do that. <laughs> it's, it's, the right, it's the right move. She came here to do what she needed to do to punch a ticket to Worlds where she's gonna have an amazing amount of competition. Uh, by the way, that I'm just very much smiling <laughs> at how she's leaving. She, she did what she needed to do and it's a, I look forward to seeing her at Worlds. You gotta stay healthy. And yeah. It's a relatively quick turnaround. And for sure, France got shooters in the 52 kilo class. Agata is up next. Agata looking to pull 165 kilo. Which is over her posted personal best. Again, we had noted she hadn't competed in a while. I think she's already beaten her personal best total with her opener. So I'm curious to see what goes on here. I was, I was actually excited to see mu how much had been added. Yeah, some lifters have a gap in competition due to obviously the lockdowns we had. But it looks like she kept training right through because yeah. strength has improved. Ikata Shabilska. Pull. You know what? Listen. Look at for an opener. What are you thinking there? <laughs> well, that's that wasn't an opener. Was that that was her second? Oh, sorry, her second. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. So that was. How much? How much would you put on kilo wise? Uh, you know what? I would put the two and a half on and get the three red plates. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. I mean, first of all, you get to as a 52 kilo lifter. Those that three red plate lift, that three red plate deadlift is 
It's another club to join, it's, isn't it's it? It's another club to join. It's awesome. Come All on. Said. And it looks that like looked Alexandria. Good. That looked good. 170 kilo. Successful for her. You know, it looked like effort, but it didn't look it didn't look like a max. Heather Connor. 185 kilo being loaded on the bar for Heather. So that is 407, 408 pounds, somewhere around there. Yep. Somebody who's better at math than me, or look at the screen, I guess. For a 47 kilo lifter, uh, someone who weighs under 105 pounds on a day where they're being conservative. This will be an American record if she can get it with one deadlift still to go. The deadlift has always been Heather's most potent weapon. Oh, that was smooth. Art farm. Oh, wow. You know, like, I never, yeah. Uh, you know, she's got more in her. I know sumo, it's dicey, the wheels fall off quick, but I think she's got quite a bit. Like, I'm talking 5, 10 kilo in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Andrew Sardis now, 192.5 on the bar for his second attempt. So Heather had said she's going to be, well, she's putting in 190 kilo for a final pole. She will be resting at 402.5 should she get it. She said around 400 or just above was her goal. She's still on pace for it. Andrew Sardis, 192.5, and this is work, but you know what? That might be the way he deadlifts, Leah. It might be. Because... So it seems like he's just a little bit uneven sometimes coming off the ground, but once he gets past that point, almost the same thing we saw the last time. Eric Kupperstein now, 205 kilo on the bar for his second attempt. 20 kilo jump from his opener. Grizzly veteran of the game, decades in. Yeah, look at the arms. Yeah, he could tie his shoes standing up. <laughs> Smooth yeah. second attempt. Four hundred and fifty one pounds. Lower the bar to four sixty two for Arnold Delgado. It's ready. Arnold Delgadillo. We're back in a six six kilo class, two hundred and ten kilo on the bar for him. Five four hundred and sixty two pounds. Pull. Yeah, that looked very easy. That's a good second attempt, yeah. And here comes Jonathan Garcia. 237 and a half kilo on the bar for him. 523 pounds. And you take a look at that that total he's got right now, 663 Arnold kilos. You know, he wants to push it towards that 700 kilo mark. That's the mark that stands up internationally. Mm -hmm.
Here's a seven and a half kilo jump towards that if he can hit this. Easy. Right. Yep, nicely done. That was smooth, and you gotta wonder if he's looking behind himself and he's wondering, can I take the foot off the gas a little bit, still get the win, and not overextend going into the World Championships? Yeah. It'll depend greatly on how what Manzo does. Yeah, and I, I it's I'm over here thinking the same thing, and I'm sure everyone is because it's it's hard to plan when, you know the person you're working with is going to deadlift last. Right. Um, right. Taylor Atwood, 260 kilo on the bar for him, 15 kilo jump from his opener. Smooth pull Easy. as usual. Yeah. So looking ahead here, it looks like Jonathan Garcia has 245 kilo loaded on the bar for his third. If he hits it, he'll have 678 kilo for his forecasted total. Rodrigo Manzo has 285 kilo loaded uh, for his second. If he hits that, he'll be at 665. Depending on if Manzo hits this, all eyes on Garcia if he nails his final third, and Manzo feels like, you know what, maybe I'm not totally out of this yet. It's gonna come down to the third attempts. Manzo getting himself ready, he knows what's at stake. If he's gonna make a push, he needs a couple things to happen. He needs to hit his next two deadlifts, and he needs Garcia to start fumbling the ball. All right, bar is lowered for Rodrigo it's not over yet. 145 pound man deadlifting 628 pounds. Right here. Does anybody care to see him knock off a new record? Can it be done? 7 kilo class, 120 kilo on the bar for her. Took a 7.5 kilo jump from her opener, taking another 7.5 kilo jump from her second. All right, what do you say, Cindy? 264 getting loaded up. We are ready. Bar's loaded. Let's hear it for our last lift of the day. Let's hear Final it. lift of the day. Cindy's, uh, three for three in squats. Just got her opener and bench press. Would love to go three for three in the deadlifts. Smooth final pull. Nice. So it looks like 
Yeah, Marissa's going to let the clock wind down on this 155. She's leaving it on the bar. It gives her, her fellow athletes 60 seconds to rest extra. It's the sporting thing to do. And it gives us a moment to look ahead at what's to come. Heather Connor has 190 kilo on the bar. So it'll, if she can hit it, she'll lead off with a 402.5. Taylor Atwood has a 275 for his third. Obviously well within his means, but if he hits it, he's still going to be at a 732.5 kilo total. Yeah, not bad for a meet that you're coming into and you know, not feeling your best. Yeah, he, he's definitely operating with warm-up room weight, and um, warm-up room weight for Taylor means 732.5. Yeah, warm-up room weight for Taylor is still better than or more <laughs> than most people are lifting. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. You know. If you were to pull up open power lifting, take a look at the 74s, I bet it's still competitive. And honestly, the same thing can be said for Marissa here. It's, you know, playing it safe and taking what is, compared to her, her best deadlift, a very conservative opener and then not doing the second lift and still winding up with a 387.5 kilo total. You know, that's a total most 52 kilo lifters would be, would be happy to achieve. Um, I'm going to have to agree with you. I get to... Speaking of 52 kilo lifters, 175 kilo for her third and final deadlift. Three reds, come on. Joining three red club. Oh, that's a battle to the knees, and it's just a little oh too much close. today. Yeah. A little bit too much for today, but she's going to get that soon. And, and by the way, at her last meet, her deadlift PR was 160 kilos. So, you know, she's got to be feeling pretty proud about that. Alexandria in the 57 kilo class, 177.5 kilo on the bar for her third and final. Alexandria went three for three in the squats, two for three in the bench, looking to close off three for three on the deadlifts here. And her second attempt looked good. Oh, little looks like it might be a little too much today. Ah, uh, good try. It's a lot of weight. Still go seven for nine on the day. Now, Heather Connor, 190 kilo being loaded on the bar for her. 418 pounds. Uh, you know, you want to talk about deadlifts. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I mean. 190 kilo, 418 pounds, three white lights, and a new American record. Heather Corner sends a signal to the rest of the 47s. I will see you at the IPF World Championships. Which I am super excited for. And you know, it's funny. I know not every day is the best day, but you look at Heather Connor doing 190 kilo deadlift, and it's like, can she do this? And my immediate reaction is like, of course she can. <laughs> like it's Heather Connor. It's Heather Connor. <laughs> Angie Sardis, 74 kilos. So we're back in the 74 kilo. Oh, Angie is just not shy on that camera, <laughs> is he? With 195 kilo on the bar for his third and final two and a half kilo jump. 192.5 was work. Uh, 
Yeah. See, I mean, that's yeah. when you're at your edge, two and a half kilos all it takes. Yeah. There it is. Arnold Delgadillo in the 66 kilo class, 220 kilo being loaded, 485 pounds. Ten kilo jump from his second. Arnold had missed his opening squat, adjusted, hit it, and hasn't missed since. Oh. So close. Yeah, a little too much. Eric Kupperstein, back in the 59 kilo class, 225 kilo on the bar for his third and final, not final pull of the day, 20 kilo jump from his second deadlift. 16. Remember him? Several world championships. Oh, it looks like he missed his third squat, third bench. Let's see if he could hit his third dead. Two to one, they give it to him. Okay. That'll do it, I, you know. So here, Jonathan Garcia, 242.5 kilo. He'll end up with a 675.5 kilo total. This is below what he's previously done. But probably telling himself, I think I'm going to clinch the win with this, not overextend, and be able to turn around at the IPF World Championships, and that is where I'm going to need that 700 kilo total. Because he's hit 697.5 previously. He has that in his pocket. It's been achieved. 700 kilos, no big ask. 2.5 kilo jump from that. So you got to pick your battles. Yeah, I think a lot of the lifters are being really mature and playing the smart game here. Uh, Worlds isn't that far away. It's a long flight. Yeah, Keep yourself healthy. It can be a full day to South Africa. Multiple time zones. Oh, wow. Plenty more in the tank there. And yeah. I had suggested he probably was playing it safe. Yeah. Yeah, that... That looked like... Like a second attempt, not a yeah. third. See the Ratwood now. 275 kilo. 606 pounds on the bar.
Again, notice, even with this kind of weight, how serious he's taking it. That's not going to re-aggravate any kind of injury he's dealing with. Yeah. And look at Taylor saying, I'm coming for my belt. Impressive. Taylor will return to the IPF World Championships looking to reclaim his belt, not only in the 74 kilo class, but if you remember, he won best lifter in 2019. Nothing less than the best is going to be good enough for Taylor Atwood. Expect him to look for that best lifter once again. And then look ahead to Sheffield. All right. Yeah, we are, Rodrigo Manzo is moving all the chips to the middle of the table, and why not? He's got nothing to lose. 296 kilo loaded on the bar. If he gets this, he'll end off with a 676 kilo total. That'll nudge him ahead of Jonathan Garcia. I will do my best to not scream in the microphone again this time. <laughs> if uh, he gets this, I might scream in the microphone. Let me tell you something. This would be a massive come from behind this victory. Would be massive. But he has nothing to lose. This is the proper move to make. You load the bar for the win. That's why you're here. You know what? And I it, uh, look at he had to do it. He had to try it. Yeah. He had to try it. I yeah. You have nothing to lose at that point. We said it was going to come down to the last deadlift. Rodrigo gave us that. Loaded yep. up for the win, and uh, just a little too much today. But there's a look at your American champions, Heather Connor, claiming the 47 kilo title. You can expect her to have a. Sensational battle with Turbo Tiff at the World Championships. Um, Marissa Inda taking the 52 kilo title. She's gonna have a work cut out for her as well by the French team at the World Championships. And Alexandria taking the 57 kilo title. Eric Kupperstein in the 59s. Jonathan Garcia clinching the 66 kilo title and will be joining a stacked division at the World Championships. And Taylor Atwood, the king is back cruises to a nine for nine day um, all smiles i know he, he took his foot off the gas for deads and squats but extended the american record in the bench press and if nothing else has a lot of positive momentum so there have you thank you for joining we will be back tomorrow the 63 69 83 in 93 kilo men will be lifting and uh, we are going to be back with the medal ceremony, I believe. Actually, sorry, excuse me, pardon me. I'm going to be doing some interviews with some of these people. Don't nice. go anywhere. Please, look at me trying to tell you to, to <laughs> jump past bumping myself here. Stick around for our interviews, and then we'll be doing the medal ceremony afterwards.